Welcome to USA Gov's Facebook Live event. I am Marietta Jelks, Editor-in-Chief of USA Gov's Consumer Action Handbook, and I'm here with Crystal Bass from the Social Security Administration, and we're here to inform you about a lot of great stuff. April is National Social Security Month, so what better time for us to get together to talk about ways to plan for your financial future and how my Social Security account can help. I want to let you know that we are going to be taking questions from you, the audience, Throughout this whole event, if you have a question, post it in the comments section of the event and we will try to answer as many of them as we can. But I want to remind you, please, 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 don't put your social security number or any other personal information in the question, just your question and we will answer as many as we can. And also, if you have questions about your specific benefits, visit social security slash agency slash contacts. So first, Thank you, Crystal, so much for being here with us today. We're so glad to have you. You're welcome. Thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to share all of the wonderful information that Social Security has for the public. It's amazing. It is amazing. You all have a lot to share. So just jump into it. First of all, what is National Social Security Month? What's that about? National Social Security Month is a time to make the public aware of their Social Security okay. benefits as well as help you make well-informed decisions about your retirement plans. Okay, that's a good start. So. With that in mind, what are some more specific things that we can do to plan for our financial future and retirement? Well, we have five things that okay. we want to let you know about. Okay. And these are five wonderful things that the first thing is get to know your social security. Okay. And the second thing is verify your earnings. And that's very important. I'm going to talk about okay. that a little later. Um, the third thing is to estimate your benefits. Okay. That is very important, very important as well. So the fourth thing is apply for benefits. Okay. And that's one of my favorite things to favorite. talk about, okay. so I can't wait to get into okay. that. Yes. And the fifth thing is manage your benefits. Okay, so five great tips. So let's delve into them a bit more because you've decided to talk about some of these and I'm excited to learn about them. I hope you are too. First of all, you told us to get to know Social Security. What does that really mean? How do we do that? Okay, so when we say get to know your Social Security, what we're telling you is that we're there with you through life's journey. Okay. So we're there with you from the time you're born. That's your first order of business. Yeah. As a baby, your first order of business is getting a social security card. So that's important, right? That is very important. And then we're there for you when you get married. I got married and social security was there for me. I was able to change my name on my social security card, which was very, very important for my husband. Okay. We weren't even off the honeymoon yet when he was asking, <laughs> when are you gonna change your name? So that's very important. And then we're there for you through your retirement, okay. of course. Um, we're also there times that people don't think about during survivor moments. Okay. So I can remember uh, and this story is very near and dear to me. I can remember receiving survivor benefits as a teenager. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, it's so emotional. But my dad actually passed away when I was a senior in high school. And you know, being a senior in high school, you have prom, you have senior week, and all of these things yes. that you want to participate in. Even though you had this tragedy, you still want to have a normal teenage life. Mm -hmm. And without me receiving those survivor benefits, my mom may not have been in a position to send me to all those things so that I can live fairly normal and do all the things my other friends were doing. So, you know, before I started working at Social Security, I already had a fondness for the agency okay. long before I started working here. So, um, fortunately for me, I have experienced where Social Security was there with me through a life journey. Absolutely, that's fantastic and really close to home. That's personal. <laughs> um, the next thing we want to talk about, you said to verify our earnings. What? Why is that important? Well. First of all, you need 40 credits for retirement and for Medicare benefits. Okay. Now, your work history directly impacts your future benefits. Okay. So your benefits are calculated by your employment record. Your employer reports your earnings to Social Security every year. Okay. So you wanna make sure those records are accurate and correct. And it's no different than now. Let's just say you get paid tomorrow. Okay. If you notice that what you earned does not reflect what's on your pay stub, That's not gonna <laughs> you're <work. laughs> going to go and verify your earnings and make sure they get that right, correct? Absolutely. So National Social Security Month is about being proactive. 
okay? So that is very important. I see now why you're really emphatic about that because that, that matters. So the third thing you told us to do was to estimate our benefits. Do you all have tools to help us do that? We absolutely do. We have a retirement estimator. Okay. However, this is everything encompassed under the retirement estimator. You also want to estimate what your benefits will be. What else are you going to have? Because everyone knows or should know that Social Security, that's not, we never intended it for that to be your only source of income in your retirement. So when you estimate your benefits, you want to include what pensions you're going to have, what savings you're going to have, and we are here for you, but you also have to take steps on your own to make sure you're living in a comfortable retirement because there's a difference between retiring and retiring comfortably. Yeah, yeah. We know that, right? Absolutely. So this is something I like to play around with. I was playing around with the tool today before I came. Just getting a feel for my estimated benefit okay. amount. And you know what it really told me? It told me that although I can start thinking about my retirement, I have a lot of more years to work <laughs> before I can retire comfortably. But the conversation needs to happen now. Like, I wish someone was having this conversation with me 20 years ago. Okay. You know, so, you know, if there are parents watching, grandparents watching, encourage your grandchildren, your children, all the millennials need to get started now planning for their retirement so that they can retire comfortably. It helps you get that big picture, it sounds like. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Reality check in some cases, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> A reality check is absolutely what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, good to know that. I might need to check myself. Um, and the last couple things you told us were to apply for benefits and manage them. Can you talk a little bit about what you mean there? No, no. Number four, excuse me. Number four, apply for benefits is one of my absolute favorite things to talk about. You can apply for benefits online. We make it so easy for you. And the one thing about applying for your retirement online, mm -hmm. you've already worked 20, 30, 40 years, right? Right. And that's a big milestone for you. So who wants to go through a complicated process of retirement? You know, you don't want to go into the office. You can apply for your Social Security benefits from the comfort of your own home, mm -hmm. in your pajamas, <laughs> and it takes as little as 15 minutes, and it's safe and secure. And last year, about 77% of the retirement claims that we got were done online from the comfort of people's homes. So, um, that is that is a big deal. deal. That is a big <laughs> deal. That's a really big deal. I can see why you're excited to talk about that. That's a huge. That's a lot. Um, and then finally, managing my benefits. You talked about that as one of the fifth steps. Now, managing your benefits, that's really important because you get to be in control. And that's really important. So we give you the control right at your fingertips. So right on your keyboard, at your fingertips, is control to manage your benefits. And who doesn't want to be in control? I like that. I know I do. <laughs> I want to be in control. I like that. <laughs> Especially in control of my future and my future benefits and a comfortable retirement. That makes sense to me. We skimmed over, we talked about a website, and I guess we want to make certain we call out to you now we're talking about socialsecurity.gov slash my account, specifically a my social security account where you can do so many things for managing your finances and your future. So that is a huge, huge tool it sounds like in this whole process of planning for your future. Um, can you tell us why specifically it's important to open a my social security account? So the biggest thing that people really need to realize is that the life expectancy is rising and people are living a lot longer into their retirements. So what you wanna do if you have not done so already is do a financial health check on yourself. And you can do that by starting a My Social Security account. It's no different than when you go to see your doctor once a year for your checkup. Uh, you should be checking your My Social Security account once a year for a financial checkup. Okay. Um, earnings could be missing. You should be checking out your record and this is a time to be proactive. You don't want to wait until something happens and you're running around trying to fix it. So be proactive in that. That makes sense. That really brings it home. That really brings it home for us. So who can open a social, my social security? I can't even say it. My Social Security <laughs> account, who is it for? Is it for a young earner? Is it for millennials? Is it for seniors? Who is the audience that this website is for? Well, there are three key pieces to this answer. Okay. And thank you so much. It's a great, great question. So the three things. One, you have to be age 18 or over. Okay. Okay. You have to have a valid U.S. 
mailing address. Okay. And the third thing is you just have to have a valid email address. Okay. That's it. So 18 and over. So if there are any kids that's getting a summer job this year and you're 18, you're getting a summer job, you need to start a My Social Security account so that you can check your earnings that you make over the right. summer. You know, and you're not going to check them until next year, of course, when they post, but this is for everyone. Um, another key point is I'm going to just say something because I know it's going to be a question that comes in. So I just want to be proactive, as I said before, <laughs> and get on top of it. Um, the question we're going to get is because I said you have to have a U.S. mailing address. And that is true. Currently, our system is not set up to take addresses outside of the U.S. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. So you got those three points. I have to be 18, 18 and over, have an email address. Email address. And a U.S. mailing address. U.S. mailing address. And you I'm got set. it. I you got it. I can do this. So you can do should, this. You should be opening okay. yours tonight. I should be doing it tonight. <laughs> I'll put that on my list. Um, so that's great information. And so a question, another follow-up, is Is there any other more technical information I need or we need in order to set this account up? Do I need to find you know, pay steps from 1998? What do I need to set this account up? Now, in order to set the account up, you're going to need to answer some personal questions. And it's just going to be information about yourself, personal information, and then questions that only you should know. Okay. And once you get past that step, you can create a username and a password, okay. and that username and password is what's going to protect your account. It's going to protect you. Okay, so it's a secure website. It's a very safe okay. and secure website. That is very You important. don't even have to worry about that. Okay, great. If you are just joining us, welcome. You are with USA Gov and our Facebook Live event this evening with Crystal Bass from the Social Security Administration. We're talking about ways to plan for your financial future and how my Social Security can help you do that. There's a lot of learning that we've made already, and I hope we continue to learn some more from Crystal. Uh, we are going to be taking questions from you throughout the uh, later on in the event, but you can leave your questions anytime in the comment section of the event below this video right now. But remember, don't put any personal information in the questions, you no know, social security numbers, mailing addresses, anything like that. Just your general question about retirement or my social security. And if you have specific questions about your per personal benefits, you might want to visit a local office and you can find it at socialsecurity.gov slash agency slash contact. So let's continue on. We are learning a lot, and I think we should just keep on with it. Um, what are some of the top tasks that I can accomplish if I log into my Social Security? Okay, so I have this handy dandy oh, like little that. thing right oh, good, here. Good, good. This is one of our great marketing materials okay. that we have. And uh, when you open a My Social Security account, there are so many things you can do. Cool. And the first thing you want to do is estimate your benefits. Uh, you want to check your earnings record and make sure your earnings are correct. Uh, you want to check the Social Security and Medicare taxes that you've paid. And in some areas, you can re request a replacement Social Security card. Now, if you already receive benefits, there are lots of things you can do as well. You can get a benefit verification letter. You can change your address and phone number. Start or change your direct deposit. Get a replacement 1099 and get a replacement Medicare card. So there is your handy dandy tool. That is a lot, that is a lot. It is, you can do a lot with that, right? I mean, that saves a lot of trips to offices. It absolutely does, and that's our goal. We want to keep you out of offices. We offer everything on the website just about, so. I didn't want you to give you that much. I've, absolutely. You've, you've gone above and beyond. I didn't <laughs> even realize that all that was possible. So when I log in, and I go to socialsecurity.gov slash my account for the first time. Mm -hmm. I've created my account tonight. What is the first thing we need to do when we log in? The absolute first thing you want to do is verify your earnings. Okay. That is very important. Make sure your earnings record is correct. Mm -hmm. We use the highest 35 years of your earnings to help determine your benefit amount. If there are missing years, we add big fat zeros there. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. If you have worked in those years, you don't want to see zeros because it may impact your benefit amount. That really brings it home of why it's so important to check my uh, earnings over time. It's Absolutely. gonna affect my, my benefits far down the line. Yes, okay. you wanna make sure you check it in. Right now, this is National Social Security Month. What better time to check than right now? Tax season just ended and so 
we should have received all of your earnings right. from your employer. So right now is the perfect time to check. So a lot of people should be signing up right as I'm speaking. That that would be a good plan. And right? as soon as we get done speaking, you should be <laughs> signing I will be up. signing up immediately. <laughs> Absolutely. Now you talked about inaccuracies and things that are mistaken on our earnings. What should I do if I find that information is incorrect or wrong um, on my earnings statement? Okay. So just imagine, like I said, if your paycheck wasn't right, mm -hmm. you would march right to your HR sure department. Would. So what you would need to do if you find something missing is you would need to prove to us that you had those earnings. Okay. And you need to prove it by your pay stubs or W-2s. Now, one thing that happened a lot when I worked in a field office mm -hmm. is people would come in to retire. Now, this was way back before we had the online retirement. Okay. But people would come in and they would have missing earnings. And then so many years had passed by, they would be scrambling to find these earnings because why? the business they were working at had folded oh. and they couldn't find the information. So you want to make sure you stay on top of that and do it now. Can you imagine that? If you came in, you had zeros where you knew you had worked, right. but the company had closed down and you had no way to get that information. Mm -hmm. I think for some people, they were able to contact the IRS okay. um, and get transcripts of it, but you can avoid that. You can avoid all of that by signing up for your My Social Security account and checking for that stuff in advance and as I said before, I like to say it, being proactive, that'll save you a lot of headache. It sounds like it. That, I can't even imagine walking into the office and having missing money that I know I worked, the years <laughs> that I worked. That would be, I think, heartbreaking. <laughs> so we're going to keep talking about retirement, but switching gears a little bit. Um, you mentioned a retirement calculator. What, what's this all about? Okay, so the retirement estimator, that thing that I like to play around on, that I played around with before I came in, that is a great tool that helps you learn what your benefit amount would be up until this point okay. of your earnings. So that's what it is. It's a handy dandy tool and it's called a retirement estimator for a reason. This is just an estimate of what your benefit amount would be. It's not accurate. Of course it's not accurate because you're gonna continue working mm -hmm. and different things yeah, like that. So absolutely. it's just a, a general estimate of what your benefits could be up until this point of you working. That's a good information to have as you're <laughs> continuing working and seeing how much longer you have to work. So right, and then you want to keep checking it every year after you've worked and see how much it's going up. Okay. <laughs> so it sounds similar. This is like a great tool, but it sounds similar to something you mentioned before, the benefits estimator. Is there anything different, or what are the similarities, differences between those two different tools? Well, I think you're talking about when you go into the My Social Security yes, account. Absolutely. So when you go into the My Social Security account, it's a little different because you can only do three things, and those three things are you can check and estimate your benefit amount when you're 62, your full retirement age, whatever that may be, and age 70. Okay. However, with the retirement estimator, you getting all this? I feel like I'm getting it, yes. <laughs> with the retirement <laughs> estimator, what you can do is what if scenarios for any age. Oh. Okay. So you can do it for you know 63 or 64 or 65. It just gives you a little more wiggle room to play around with different ages according to your own situation. Okay. But that sometimes is the decision. Is you yeah, know, it's helpful. How much more time you're going to work or stick around or so that absolutely, makes sense. absolutely. Okay. Again, if you're just joining us, we are with Crystal Bass from the Social Security Administration. We are learning all about how to plan for our financial futures and how my Social Security account can help us. You can go to socialsecurity.gov slash my account and sign up for an account today. I need to do that tonight, and I hope you're doing that tonight. And, and I'm going to check. She's going to check. I'm going to check. She has money. She'll doing. check. <laughs> um, so no pressure, but pressure. And then <laughs> also, if you have questions, we're going to be answering some questions from you all later on in this event. So if you have a question, please post it in the comment section. Again, no social security numbers or any personal info. Just your question. Um, general about retirement uh, programs and uh, benefits that Social Security offers. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. You talked to us about um, how Social Security is with us throughout our life, how it helps us from birth to you know childhood to all everywhere in between. And so I want to talk about something that your agency is most known for, and that's our Social Security card. And sometimes we lose them. We move to another city, we pack, we unpack, anything like that, and we lose our Social Security card. What should we do if we've lost our Social Security card? If you've Security. lost your Social Security card, first, realize you may not need a replacement card. Knowing your Social Security number is what's oh. important. Okay. However, if there's one of those reasons 
that you may need it. I'm gonna tell you what to do, but let me give you an example okay. of okay. what some of those reasons might be. Uh -huh. Maybe you just got a new employer and they need to see your social Absolutely. security card. That's one case where you know you may need to get a replacement card or you know, if you have kids that need to get enrolled in school or a daycare center, that's another case. Yeah. And then, so if you need it, you need to gather all of your documents and you can go on our website and see exactly what documents you mm -hmm. need. And we only take originals, um, no photocopies, but we do take certified copies, no photocopies. And then you can uh, print off an application and you can mail it or take it to your local so okay. social security office. and. Um, You'll have it in about 10, 10 business days. 10 business days? About 10 business yes. days. And one great thing, a new feature, fairly new that we've added, there's about 20 states that allow you to get a replacement card. Guess where? No. On your My Social Security oh my account. Goodness. Exactly. Wow. So you can go online to see if your state is on that list. That saves a lot of time. It does. That's that's great. I'm, I'm learning so much. I didn't. Even, I knew not that much about all of this. So you've helped them a lot, and I haven't even finished the conversation with well, I'm you. I'm so glad. It's really helpful. <laughs> so switching gears a little bit, let's talk a bit about some of the more specific benefits that the Social Security Administration offers. One of those is disability um, insurance. How do you define disability at the Social Security Administration? Now, first, let me just tell you that we have all of these great pamphlets that we offer on our website. Oh, okay. So if anyone does not understand any of these programs, just look up on our website. And our definition of disability is very strict and different than other programs. Okay. And a lot of people often try and compare us to the VA, and it's just because we're another federal agency, right? Mm -hmm. But we're different because we only pay people for total disability. We don't pay for partial or short-term disability okay. at all. Um, our disability decisions are based on your medical condition okay. and the fact that you're not expected to be able to work for 12 months or more or your condition leads to death or is terminal. Okay. Yep. So, so they're very specific. Handy -dandy. Very it's, it's, very, it's a strict definition. Okay. It's, a, it's a strict definition. And it's all lined out on your website, though? It's all lined out in our handy-dandy pamphlets. Okay. That's good to know. And then speaking of another benefit you offer, supplemental security income. What do you have to do or what do you have to uh, have in order to qualify possibly for uh, supplemental so security income? Okay. So just so that we can know the difference. Here's the SSI pamphlet. Okay. And I'm so glad you asked this question because okay. a lot of people confuse the two programs. Um, SSI is a little different in that it's a needs-based program and disability is based on your earnings, but SSI, it's for disabled adults or children. Okay. You know, disabled adults or children. And we also pay benefits to people 65 years and older who may not be disabled, but they also have limited income and, income and resources. So all parties involved, the disabled adults and children have to have limited okay. income and resources. And the 65-year-old adults, although they don't have to be disabled, they have to have limited income and resources as well. Okay. That clarifies it a bit. That clarifies it, and I do want to mention one thing. So if you guys go to look for these, very soon we're going to be doing a redesign of the pamphlet. Okay. And so it's going to have a different look and feel, but it's still going to have some great information. The information is what really matters. That's though, what right? matters, Absolutely. yes. But you know, we're rolling out a new look, and we're excited about okay. that too. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing them, absolutely. Okay, well, you've clarified a lot of information for me today, personally, and I hope for people out there watching us, but are there any uh, common topics or issues that people get really confused about in terms of Social Security and in terms of retirement benefits, anything like that that people are always like confused about? Yes, I touched on, um, I touched on two things a little earlier, but let me hit these one more time. Okay. So one thing that people think all the time is that Social Security is just for retirement. And as I said before, it's not just for retirement. It's not just for older people. It's for everyone. Mm -hmm. We're with you through life's journey. So we just want everyone to keep that in mind. You know, as I said before, I received benefits. So this is not just for retirement. So everyone 
needs to find out about Social Security and how it can help them because it's a lot more than what people think. And now I also touched on this other thing, and that was about how people have this, I don't want to say a misconception, but there's a little confusion when people believe that Social Security is all they need to retire. And as I said before, in order for you to retire comfortably, you're going to need some other things. So currently, one in three Americans have nothing saved for their retirement. And Social Security was only meant to replace about 40% of your income. So that lets us know right there. There are other things that you need to have. So I'm going to give you some things to do. Okay. This is a little homework. So you need to check out myra.gov. Okay. It's myra.gov. Did I say .gov or .com? .gov. But it's .gov. .gov. You said .gov. And mymoney.gov. Okay, check those out. In addition to having your My Social Security account, going to myra.gov and mymoney.gov, that should get you well on your way to planning a comfortable retirement. Okay, so my financial future is dependent upon my Social Security, my RA, and my money. It's dependent on you doing that it's homework a- again. <laughs> now, if you follow what I'm telling you, you should be all right. Okay, okay. <laughs> So we are going to jump to some questions. Remember, we are taking questions, and we're about to jump into them. If you have questions, post them in that comment section below. Remember, no personal information there, just your general question about uh, my Social Security and general retirement financial planning information. Um, and then remember, just to sign on and you know sign up tonight. Um, we're going to jump to these questions, though we do have a few, a couple. Um, first one is... Um, what if I uh, want to laminate my social security card? Can I do that? Mariella. Marietta. Marietta. Marietta, please do not laminate okay. your social security card. Okay. You promise? I promise. I promise. <laughs> okay. So do not laminate your card, but I do understand that people want to preserve it because it's a little paper and, you know, sometimes it's it gets all Yeah. And I know how my own looks. So... You know, don't laminate it, but you can take removable plastic and put over top of it. Or if you even just want to put it in a a little baggie, you can do that as well. But if you want to preserve it, preserve it. Don't laminate it because it prevents detection of the security features, and we don't want you taking away any security features. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. So we have one more, another question. Um, Someone wants to know, can they open a My Social Security account for a loved one, elderly parent or a spouse or anyone else now let me look right here now just because I work for the Social Security Administration I get this question all the time and I just say no do not open an account for anyone else these accounts are for your exclusive use only and just remember this it's called a my Social Security account not our Social Security account it's my Social Security account so it's only for you okay Okay. Even if someone gives you written permission to open an account for them, you cannot do it. Unauthorized use of access can subject you to penalties, and I don't want to get any penalties. I don't know about you. Uh, it doesn't sound like a good point. No, 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 it's not good. Okay. Um, another question we have is, I'm receiving disability benefits, and I'm able to retire. What happens to my disability de- benefits? Okay, that's a great question. So if you're receiving disability benefits already, and then you get to your full retirement age, what happens is you have to do nothing. We take care of all the work for you. Your benefits will automatically convert over to retirement benefits. Really? Yes, isn't that awesome? I didn't know that. It takes some of the work out of it for you. You don't even have to think about it. It just happens automatically. Okay, so another question we have here is, I'm living, well not me, but this person is living internationally and they want to know can they open a My Social Security account? Well, this is one of the things we talked about a little earlier, so they may not have tuned in until late, but you have to have a U.S. mailing address in order to sign up for a My Social Security account. Oh, okay. It has to be U.S.? Yes. Okay. Even if they are a U.S. resident or a U.S. citizen living abroad, yes. they have to. But you know, one thing, if they need to access their account, what they really can do is just go to their embassy or consulate. Um, they can file for benefits. Okay. Now, that's an option that they have. They can file for benefits. They just can't start a My Social Security account. But if they go to their embassy or consulate, they can give them all the information they need. Okay. All right. Isn't that awesome? That is Great. I didn't they have Social Security offices all over. All over. <laughs> wow. Really? You really. Okay. 
Um, are there any tips that you know as far as um, people getting married? If someone's getting married and they want to change their name, how do they do that? You got married recently, you mentioned. So how does that happen? Do you have to go through some rigorous process or how does that happen? Well, it's not vigorous. However, you are not able to do that on your My Social Security account just yet, okay. but you will have to take all of your proofs into the office. So you have to prove that your name has changed. You're gonna have to take your marriage certificate into the office with you in order to get that changed on your card. But it's a possibility. It's a possibility, and uh, if if uh, the husband's out there or anything like my husband, as soon as you get married, you'll be right down there doing it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> He was serious about it. Yeah, this. you know, what's that you buy a ring, it's like, yes, you need what's to take my name. name? <laughs> um, okay, we have a question. What should I do if I think someone is using my Social Security card? Oh, that is a great, great question. So if you believe someone is using your Social Security card, first of all, you need to check your earnings. You know, because every now and again, someone will work under your record. Someone really? will use your Social Security card to work under your record. But you need to report it to the credit bureaus okay. immediately. And you also need to go on our website, on Social Security's website, mm -hmm. and contact OIG and file a fraud report. Okay. That's important. That's it's in very day and time, identity theft is at rampant. Even for someone's Social Security, now, it's just and it's mind boggling. And if I can add, if I can make one note sure. to... You know, I know a lot of people are going to go on and they're going to uh, sign up for their My Social Security yes. account tonight. Yes, yes. I know a lot of people are going to do that. And I just want to say, um, I know of several situations where folks have called me and said that they were trying to sign up for their account and they couldn't get in. Um, they couldn't do it. It wasn't accepting the questions. And I will say, if you already have a fraud report on your account, if you already experienced someone using your card and you've already reported it to the three credit bureaus, you will not be able to just go online yourself tonight and start it. You're going to have to call. We have a dedicated My Social Security hotline. Okay. You're going to need to call that hotline and speak to someone and see if they can assist you in starting your My Social Security account. I think that's really important that for some people who may have already experienced fraud. That makes sense. Yes, but another good point is, let's just say you've never experienced any fraud and you start your My Social Security account tonight. Mm -hmm. That protects you. Once you do that, you create your username and password, no one else can ever create a my social security account in your name and and let's just talk about how important that is because as i said before you can change your direct deposit on your my social security account you can change your address so let's just say you didn't start one but someone fraudulently started a my social security account in your name uh -huh. and you're receiving benefits they would be able to go in there change the direct deposit and be able to get your check oh, so wow. My social security is all about protecting yourself. You can protect yourself this way. So I know a lot of people are starting theirs tonight, and I'm really happy about that. That is great. Uh, we have more questions coming in from all over. <laughs> um, I want to know, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed that one. If I've been married for 10 years, can I get social security benefits from my ex-spouse's record? Oh, that's it. I know a lot of people want to know the answer to this question. And the answer is yes, if you're eligible, if you're eligible, and one of the biggest requirements is that you do have to be married for those 10 years. 10 years? It has to be 10 years. Oh, wow. Well, that, well, that isn't a reason to stay married, but that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> um, another question we got in is, can I go to my local Social Security office and pick up a statement of how much I drew last year for tax purposes. Can they go into the office and find out how much benefits they received and for tax purposes? Well, why would anyone want to go into the office when you can start a My Social Security account and get that information? So it would show how much they got cumulatively over the entire last year? Well, it's going to show your earnings record and by now, which is April, your employer should have sent you your earnings from last year. Right. Okay. We are, these questions are streaming in. Let's see. Let me refresh. Um, I think we, we might have gotten through a lot of them. They are coming. This is really, <laughs> this is great. Um, if, if, I see if there's a lot of questions coming through and we don't get yeah, to these, we, I will be happy to go tomorrow and Monday. I'll be happy to go online and respond to the ones that, um, that we 
are allowed to respond to. So if we don't get to your question tonight, no worries. I will personally be there responding to some questions. Okay. Well, I think we have time for just one last question for you. Okay. Um, are there any final thoughts you want to leave us with, Ms. Crystal, about Social Security and financial planning and my Social Security account? Anything that resonates that we definitely need to know? What you really need to know, and thank you so much for allowing me some final thoughts. That is really, really important. So what I do want to say is although April is National Social Security Month and we're celebrating all this month, you have to know that you have to check on your financial health all year round. You know, it's no different than you catching a cold in October. You're still gonna go get it checked out, right? So you have to pay attention and plan for your retirement all year round, not just in the month of April. Um, you need to learn about what Social Security is all about and start planning. Um, and if I can give you one more final thought. Please do. One more final thought that next month, we will be launching our highly anticipated baby names, it, our popular baby names. And really? uh, yes, we're so excited about that. So this is something great for expecting moms and dads. They can look on there and see what the most popular names was for last year. Oh, wow. Or grandmas and grandpas or aunties and uncles. It's such an exciting time. And we're going to have all types of quizzes and fun things to help us launch these names. And we want you all to be a part of it. So like our Facebook page, uh, sign up for our Social Security Matters blog. We have LinkedIn, Google+, YouTube. Um, we just have so much.